What's up, everyone? Happy, happy, happy Saturday. Elliot here from Movie Files, back with one of my favorite segments that we do on the channel, and that is breaking down all of our new releases for the month. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty busy month, man. We got a lot of new films to look forward to in theaters, uh, some movies coming to streaming services, and some shows making their return that I'm very excited and also sad that they're going to be ending. But we'll be breaking it all down in today's live. But before we get into it, just want to thank you all again for tuning in. Happy uh, April 1st. Um, for all those fools out there. <laughs> no, happy uh, happy April 1st, first of the month, you know, rents due and all that good stuff. So, uh, but we're here to, to take our minds off of uh, the bills and reality of the uh, adulthood and all that stuff and have some fun and talking about some movies and shows coming out from the month of April. So this is your first time tuning in. What I do is I break down not all the movies, not all the shows coming to stream, but things that got me, you know, excited, things that have my attention, things that I'm looking forward to, um, you know, watching and reviewing for you all for the month. And then of course, I do these live because I want to know what shows and what movies are you most excited for. So we're going to be having a live interaction, breaking down those new movies and shows and just having a good time. So again, uh, as you guys are all tuning in, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you could hit that thumbs up, if you're enjoying the conversation, if you're excited for the new movies and shows coming out for the month, uh, also share, you know, share this video, man. If you know people that love movies and shows like we do and love talking about movies and shows and love knowing about new movies and shows, I definitely share this stream. And again, we're live. I love interacting with you all live. So definitely leave your comments in the live chat. Um, it's just me. So I'm going to be interacting with you all as often as I can, uh, as far as your questions, concerns, your comments, what movies and shows that I miss. So this will be a good time. Um, and I'm excited to be here, man. Again, March was a pretty solid month, which before we get into the new movies, I guess I can pull up, you know, the last few months I've been doing, um, tier list where I would rank the movies and shows I saw for the previous month, but I didn't see a ton of stuff last month, if I'm being honest with you all. Um, but I saw some good ones, man. I think March was probably one of the best March um, lineups we got in, in quite a while for um, for movies and, and as well as shows. I'm just pulling up my list here on Letterbox, just trying to remember all the <clears throat> major stuff I saw. And, and while we're getting that set up, Go ahead and put in the comments now what new movie uh, did you all see last month or new show of that matter that you guys saw last month that really, really um, worked for you? On a, you know, was a favorite movie of the year? Was it to surprise you? Just let me know what movies you all saw, what new shows you all saw that caught you by surprise. It was one of your favorite of the month. So I'm going to pull up my list here on Letterbox. Before we get into all the new stuff coming for the month, and I'm going to get to these comments and welcome everyone to the stream here in a bit. But let me just pull up my list. Here's my letterbox for the the new movies I saw for March. It probably starts. I saw Scream. Did I see Scream 6 in March or February? Anyway, it was a new release. So these were kind of the new releases I saw for March, starting with Scream 6. And if you guys saw my review, I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I did a ranking for you all can check out that video. I had a uh, Yutaka from the horror hour join me. We did almost like a two hour live this well, not live, but it was a pre-recorded video that we broke down the entire film. So you all can get my full thoughts on that. But scream was very entertaining, very, uh, fun, uh, one of the better ghost faces for me in the franchise, not my favorite ghost face reveal, uh, but I really enjoyed the narrative with Sam and Tara and the core four, man, really excited to see what they do with Scream 7 to see what location they go to because New York was definitely was used, but I wish they would have used it a little bit more to the, uh, the, you know, the story and all that stuff of just how scary it would have been to really explore all the different uh, avenues of, of New York, but very, very, very big fan of that. Shazam Fear of the Gods, we've been talking about that for the last few months. I, I, as I said in my review, I got a chance to see it all the way back in December, and I, I liked it for what it was. Of course, if you all have uh, been reading the headlines, it hasn't been doing that well financially. Uh, one of the lowest returns for a DC EU film, uh, one of the lower, you know, bigger budget superhero films in quite a long time, as far as this very disappointing box office receipts. And uh, the star of the movie isn't making it look any better, man. Uh, Zachary Levi has definitely been putting his foot in his mouth, at least for me, in my opinion. Everyone has their right to their you know, opinions and, and can share their thoughts on their platforms, as he has done the uh, last couple weeks with sharing things about The Rock, interfering the post credit scene, uh, as well as just other things. But neither here nor there, for what it was worth, I enjoyed Shazam. It wasn't as good as the first one, in my opinion, but for what they were going for i thought it stuck the landing for the most part but you know you can see my review for some of my uh, issues that i have with the film john wick chapter four y'all 
it was uh, I have again a full breakdown. I, I did a spoiler breakdown for it, and I have a ranking of of where I placed this one amongst the other four chapters or the other three chapters, just to say. But the more and more I sat on it, and the more and more I thought about it, I was just like, man, that was just, and especially in IMAX, it was just one of my favorite theatrical experiences for quite a long time. And I'm just so uh, uh, happy for the the team that put this chat, these films together, man. Because if you think about John Wick, what was it, 2014, 2015, just a small, simple story about a hitman who lost his wife, and the wife gives him a dog, the dog dies, and he goes on a, on a vengeance, a path of, of destruction and chaos, and we get three other movies to add on to that legacy of this character and of course we know we have a spinoff with the ballerina and then the continental coming out later this year and the ballerina next year so it's just they really have done something that is very rare in hollywood which is to take a simple premise and to spawn off of it of a, of a franchise they didn't mean to do a part two a part three and a part four it just kind of happened to be and sometimes when it happens you, you don't get the best sequels but i know for some people out there the sequels are better as they went along again you can see my rankings of how i placed the different chapters but I, I was very uh very pleased what we got with the latest chapter um and then another film that i saw earlier in the month was called inside star and the great Willem the foe i did a, a 60 minute review or 60 minutes 60 second review that you all can see on my youtube short shorts and I enjoyed Willem Dafoe's performance. I thought the cinematography, the placing of him being, and he's a, for you all that don't know, it's a small independent focus features film. Willem Dafoe was an art thief and he breaks into this super high end, high rise that's just like soup top notch security. He somehow gets trapped into this high rise for, <laughs> it seemed like weeks and sometimes it, it actually felt like it was months, but neither here nor there, you watch, you're watching this man just fall into chaos. I mean, he goes deeper and deeper because he's by himself. Like there's the, the person that lives there seems to have moved out uh, as you'll see as the, as the film goes on, but it's, it's a pretty wild film. I didn't think it stuck the landing and it was a little bit too long on a tooth, but you can't deny the brilliant performance by Willem Dafoe, who's just a goat. Uh, in my opinion, but uh, a film that I wouldn't necessarily say is worth seeing in theaters, even though it was gorgeous to look at, I would definitely say it's something maybe to check out when it does hit streamings, which I would imagine would be sooner rather than later. And then last but not least for me, y'all, before we get into today's main topic and I get to you guys' comments here in a second, and again, I appreciate you all joining me. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. I saw this last Saturday, and man, I had heard all the great buzz. I think they played it at South by Southwest a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> And everyone was talking about how great it was. And as they were doing the press screenings and, you know, everyone just consistently saying, this movie is so good. It's so good. I'm like, uh, okay, I'll, I'll see for myself, right? And, and listen, I'm not a big, and I said in my, I did another, uh, this is another short review because I kind of didn't think it was going to get as much traction as far as the algorithm goes. So I didn't do like a full, you know, review that I normally do. But I do have a, a 60 second review that you all can check out. But as I said in that review, I never played D&D, familiar with it, obviously. Uh, I've had people that, that I've known in my life that played D&D. And of course, the popularity of it, kind of the resurgence of it being in the, in the zeitgeist, the social or the pop culture zeitgeist with the emergence of Stranger Things and, and so on and so forth. And there's, of course, the uh, it was a Vox Machina show on Amazon. So it's, it's, it's been in the zeitgeist, but it just hasn't been as popular as uh, it has been in the last few years. But, you know, I was like, uh, I, I'm a big Chris Pine fan. I like Michelle Rodriguez, Hugh Grant, uh, Regine Jean Paul, uh, you know, Sophia Lillis, Justin Smith. And I love the directors from this film who did Game Night, which is whew, one of my favorite comedies in the last five years so i was like you know what let's go in even though it's, it's having all this great positive let's go in and see what's going on with this film and i'm telling y'all man this is so far this year this is the biggest hit surprise for me uh very much enjoyed this film it uh it started off a little rocky for me again you can see my my short review for it started off a little bit rocky but once we hit there's a particular scene in the film that's kind of entering into the second half of the movie and that's where they go to like a graveyard scene if you've seen the movie you know what scene i'm referring to but as soon as it hit for that point for me and that's like 20 25 minutes into the film once we get there it just hits the ground running for me and the chemistry was on point really enjoyed the uh the cast as a whole again chris pine yeah, like i mentioned it kind of reminded me a lot of like a guardians film like he was our star lord we have like a, a mixture of amalgamation of like gamora nebula uh michelle rodriguez was like a drax character to me and it was just a really fun film and it had a lot of heart too uh once you get especially you get to the third act and just whole theme about family and fighting for others and things of that nature it's a really good film y'all like I, i'm not blowing smoke on this one i really it's not my favorite film by no means but it's the most surprisingly 
uh surprisingly really good film for me this year so that's that's kind of my list of the films i saw of course if you all watch the channel uh you know we review tv shows so you know we did you season two or season four part two last month we covered uh, Swarm, which was one of my favorite shows so far this year, which you all can see all my coverage for that. And Servant ended its run, uh, which you all can see my thoughts on that. So it was, it was a solid month. It was a solid month overall for me, especially from the movies uh, for me. But let me check in with you guys. Let me see what movies and shows and, and all that good stuff you all saw for the month that really stood out to you. And uh, we'll go from there and we'll get to today's topic, which is highlighting all the new movies coming out. So Little Sim saying hey i'm new well hello to you welcome welcome uh if you haven't consider subscribing uh man what's going on hello hello how you doing hope you're having a good saturday so far good to always see you uh what's going on use uh, useless one interesting title there jimmy what's on what's going on jimmy how we doing um don't be oh no yeah i'm not a big I'm a prankster, but, you know, it's just kind of, you know, April Fool's is just too on the nose for me, right? So, no, I don't do any pranks uh, on, on this particular day, but out of the other days of the week, you never know. You got to watch out for me, man. But what's going on, Justin? How are we doing today? Um, let's see. I'm excited for any new horror movie and shows. We got some horror to talk about a little bit later uh, that I'm excited to get into, so we'll get into that later. My man, B. Avery. What's up, B? Uh, let's do this. Please hit the thumbs up. Uh, Rent sucks. Yes, it does. April Fool's. Hashtag movie five. Well, shout out to Brandon, who will be going live. I know he's doing a live stream later today, and then tomorrow, uh, he is celebrating his 100th live movie roundup show where he breaks down all the movie news and tv news and all that fun stuff so he he has a hundred of those in the books and number uh episode 100 will be going live uh tomorrow i think he goes live around 6 p.m central time so definitely check out brandon from just my opinion reviews and uh shout out to you man 100 episodes that's that's an accomplishment my friend shout out to you shout out to you um What's going on, G? Uh, how we doing? How we doing? Uh, Avatar. Oh, Avatar was a movie you saw last month that you really enjoyed. Uh, very cool. I saw Shazam 2. Well, let me know, man. I know you're a big DC fan like I am. Let me know what you thought about Shazam 2. Uh, Zia, what's up? What's up? Hey, chat. I can't. Um, yeah, we'll be getting into that. Yeah, that's definitely a show I have on my list that we'll be breaking down a little bit later. Till last little best show. Not uh, not new, but new episodes. Loving it. Good, man. I, I, I got some catching up to do with Mr. Ted Lasso, but I'm glad it's. And this is the final season, if I'm not mistaken, right, Justin? Let me know if that is the case. Um, Scream 6 was awesome. Yep, I agree. Uh, KW, have you seen? I haven't, uh, KW. Um, and it sucks, man. I, I had hulu for my phone uh my uh contract or whatever but my contract i finally paid off my phone so my like features or bonuses had expired uh, a month ago so i don't have hulu anymore so i know it's on hulu if i'm not mistaken and i've heard great things about it so uh yeah i gotta hit up some friends and be like hey what's, the, what's that password for hulu you know but i heard good things about it so i gotta i haven't seen it to answer your question but i heard it was really good uh let's see the last of us yep that was great Bad Batch. Uh, and you know what? We're going to have, uh, if, you, if you if you stick around, G, we're going to be talking about Star Wars a little bit later because uh, later this month, um, The Mandalorian will be ending the, the third season. Uh, the finale will be premiering. So we'll be having a, a little Star Wars topic a little bit later. Uh, Ted Lasso and also Servant. Great. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really enjoyed Swarm. And I got a, a new show that we're going to be talking about that I'm really excited about that uh, we'll have a lot of people talk. At least I hope it will. Glass Onion. Yeah, that was a good movie. <laughs> Yeah, Glass Onion was really good. Uh, never thought John Wick would be. I'm <laughs> glad to see writers uh, flex the creative muscle. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Justin. I don't think there. I don't think a lot of people are acknowledging the creative, the creativeness that was going on with that franchise that they were able to spawn into, you know, three other films and then you know get these spinoffs and. You know, we'll see what happens with John Wick Five. But yeah, it was very, very uh, a huge applause to them. Is John Wick worth it? I haven't seen any other movies yet. I watched the first 10 minutes of the first one, and I guess I wasn't the best headspace and ditched it, but I'll need to. Yeah, you know, listen, it's, a, it's an action, action-driven action franchise, right? So it's not the most uh, thought-provoking scripts, right? But, it, I mean, there's still enough meat on the bone that keeps you interested on what's going on, especially when you get to the later chapters when they expo explore the um, – the Continental, which is a hotel where a lot of these assassins stay, and you get to learn the rules and other supporting characters. So I think so. But again, if you're not a big action fan, then it might not be the franchise for you. But if you appreciate good action, you know, for me, I would say John Wick, Mission Impossible, 
of course, the superhero genre. Uh, and there's a couple, you know, a couple other, the raid films, you know, I think those franchises per se have been keeping action alive and especially John Wick being on top of that. So I would recommend it. But again, if you're not a big action fan, maybe it's not, maybe it's not your uh, cup of tea, but I love those films. Scream 6 was such a great surprise, mainly how much I enjoyed it. <clears throat> My favorite new Scream. Nice, nice. Uh, Dungeon Dragon looks pretty good. It, 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 yeah, again, I would recommend, I'm not saying it's the greatest film of all time, but I was very pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed um, Dungeons and & Dragons. And, and I recommend it, y'all. I do recommend you all give it a watch, if you have the time, of course, uh, to check it out in theaters. Um if you don't know, yeah, no, I know what it is. Uh, I just haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's on Hulu. Um, and I, like I had mentioned, I don't have Hulu anymore. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I can check it out. My friend really wants me to watch uh, Red Terry. Uh, thoughts. Listen, G, <clears throat> that is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. And and if you've been you, you've been a part of this channel for a while, you know I'm I was born in horror, I was born in darkness. Uh, so I I, I don't get too moved by um, horror films that much because I'm just so desensitized towards the genre, even though I love the genre so much. But I just don't get scared by horror movies like I used to when I was a kid. But uh, that was the last legit time I was scared watching a, a movie. Which I read to say what was that 2017 or 2018? Yeah, I, I love Hereditary. So gee, if you are a scary cat, I'm, and this is coming from a horror fan. It's one of the scariest films I've ever seen. Uh, and we'll be talking about Ari Aster a little bit later. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, if you're going to watch it, have your whole family with you in the middle of the day <laughs> with the lights on, windows open, <clears throat> all that good stuff. It's 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 one of my favorites for sure. I was surprised by how much I – yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was such a good time. Yeah, definitely recommend checking out uh, D&D for sure. Uh, I'm on my way to see Wick. Have a good time. Have a good time. Hope you're having a good Saturday. Uh, it's a good movie to see on a Saturday for sure. Uh, all right, so I think I'm caught up. Creed 3. I like, oh, here you go. Uh, about your Creed 3. I really like Shazam 2. It was entertaining, funny. I started watching The Mandalorian March. Nice. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, the film. And uh, like I said, we'll be talking about The Mandalorian a little bit later. I got some thoughts on Mandalorian. You can only pick one, you can only pick one April horror release. Oh, it's easy for me. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put a pin in that, uh, Sully. But I, I it's an easy pick for me. But I'm gonna rem I'm gonna I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna star this comment later because we're gonna get into that when we break down the new movies. But I will definitely answer your question when we get to that point. I couldn't fit it. Zia, man, I love Hereditary. Like I legit get scared. <laughs> I love that movie so much. But speaking of movies, y'all, we are here to talk about the new releases for the month of April, which, man, this year is going by so fast. We're already in April. But again, happy April to you all. Today, we will be breaking down all the new releases coming to theaters, coming to Netflix, uh, uh, Apple, Disney, uh, HBO, and we got a lot of good stuff to, to look forward to. So before we get into it again, I appreciate all 23 of you all that are watching live. If you can, if you haven't already, remember to hit the thumbs up, share the stream, leave your thoughts in the comments, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And those watching the replay, I appreciate you. And more importantly, I want to know what you're excited for in the comments below. So let me know what new movie, what new show are you most excited for in the comment section. So with that being said, let's get into what's coming to the big screen in the month of April and coming out less than a week and more or less coming out this coming week. We got some good films to look forward to. And we're going to start off by talking about what's coming out on April 5th, which is on a Wednesday. And we got two movies to look forward to, and that is Air. Courting a Legend and the Super Mario Brothers. So let's start off by talking about Air. So this film did premiere at a couple film festivals, and everyone that has seen this film has said nothing but great things about it, which to me isn't too surprising because, hey, listen, Ben Affleck, great actor, but if I'm being honest with you all, I prefer the director, Ben Affleck. And again, this is no disrespect to him as an actor because he started off as an actor first. You know, he's written some scripts. He's obviously, uh, you know, Goodwill Hunting and so on and so forth. But I really like when Ben Affleck gets behind the camera and I'm hearing that this might be one of his best films to date. So for you all that don't know, Air is based on the creation of arguably the greatest, most iconic shoe line of all time, and that is the Air Jordans by Nike. And this is a film about how they came up with the shoe, how they got Michael Jordan involved, but also I think it's more in involving the behind the scenes of, you know, the the, the CEOs, the, the obviously Michael Jordan's mother, and how it came to be the like I said the most popular shoe 
I think arguably of all time. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. And again, I'm a big fan of Ben Affleck behind the lens, you know, Argo <clears throat> gone, baby gone. I wasn't the biggest fan of his most recent one. Um, uh, was it live by night was the name of i'm not mistaken it, it wasn't terrible but it just was compared to his other two films uh it just didn't move the needle for me entirely but i i love what he brings uh, with his sensibilities since he is an actor turned director you know i always think that combination can go one of two ways it can go really bad <laughs> or it can go really good and i think in the case for ben affleck that transition has been pretty seamless with his uh his you know experience behind the lens or i say in front of the lens and translating that to behind the lens so i mean the cast alone as you all saw from the poster not only is ben affleck i uh, believe he's a co-star i don't think he's the lead of this film i think matt damon's the lead of the movie jason bateman chris tucker viola davis the goat the legend herself so I, i'm really looking forward to it i think i'm going to be seeing it just a, a couple days before it releases i believe monday or tuesday is our screen out here in st louis so very excited for this hearing some fantastic things about it and um, as a fan of michael jordan a fan of this cast a fan of the director i don't know how I'm not going to like this film. <laughs> so let me know in the chat if you guys are looking forward to seeing Air, directed by the great Ben Affleck, coming out this coming Wednesday. But moving on to the big one, which I think um, will be maybe the highest gross in animated film this year and maybe of the entire year. We'll get into that here in a second. But obviously, I'm talking about Super Mario coming out on... April 5th. Now, me personally, of course, I grew up with Mario. I wasn't the like I didn't play all the games, but I've played my fair share of Mario Kart and a couple of the Mario games, played it on the phone, Nintendo, all that good stuff. You know, Sega Genesis, all that stuff. You know, I've played uh, a lot of different versions of it, but I wouldn't call myself like a diehard Super Mario fan, right? But I'm um, no, I'm still very excited to see what this has to offer. I believe they will be releasing the first reactions because some of the um press members have seen this film so we will be hearing some of the initial buzz later tonight i believe i will be seeing it i can't remember what day i'm going to be seeing uh i think it's back to back i'm gonna be seeing air on monday and then super mario on tuesday or it might be the other way around but i'm looking forward to it i'm again i'm not overly excited because I, I i grew up with the character i enjoyed the games while i played them but i i was when i was younger i was more interested in other video games and other you know ips but nonetheless i'm still looking forward to seeing what this has to offer and if we're being honest with each other illumination has been one of the best well not you know best can be subjective but as far as financially goes they've been really carrying the animated genre when you look at films from Pixar and Disney, which they're pivoting to putting things on Disney Plus and kind of train the audience to look forward to their stuff on Disney Plus and rather than seeing it in theaters. Meanwhile, Illumination, they've been eating up the box office, right? The, the Minions movies always make a billion. I think the last Minion movie that came out last year made a close to a billion. And obviously, we know the pandemic, uh, the movie theaters are still trying to get back into a, a normal rhythm. And, you know, they've been really killing it, man. So, you know, we're going to do a little game at the end of this rundown as far as box office predictions. But I'm going to put that bold prediction now that I think this will be the highest grossing, easily the highest grossing animated film of the year. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of the highest grossing films of the entire year. But again, we'll get into my predictions a little bit later. But let me know if you are a Mario fan. Again, the cast is pretty stacked. Of course, it comes with the controversy of Chris Pratt voicing the character of Mario. We'll see how that comes out. Uh, but we have Anna Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach. We have the great Charlie Day, uh, uh, who I'm a big fan of because I'm a big fan of uh, Sunny in Philadelphia. He's playing Luigi. You have Jack Black as Bowser, uh, Michael Keen Key. As told, uh, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. So, I mean, it's a great cast. Illumination has a pretty good track record. It seems that like they're putting in a lot of, you know, the Nintendo is in, in co-producing this film. So, they, they have all the creators and all the people that love this, this IP and these characters being involved in the film. So, hey, let me know. Mario, will you be seeing it when it comes out this Wednesday? Let me know in the chat. Again, we're going to play a game when we wrap up the movie section and talk about some box office predictions. But again, I'm, I'm pretty confident to feel like this might be the highest grossing, not only animated film, but maybe film of all year, of this, this year entirely. So we'll see. We'll see. But let's move on to what's coming out on the Friday, which is on the 14th, and that is Renfield, y'all. This is the new horror comedy, I guess you want to call it, uh, starring, as you all can see on the poster now, Nicholas Holt, who I'm a big fan of. I think he's a great actor. And we have the uh, incredible 
legend himself. Nicholas Cage playing the iconic Dracula. And we also have Aquafina, Ben Swartz, and the director of this film is the one and only Chris McKay, who I'm a big fan of. Chris McKay did the, the Lego film. I think he did the first one, or he might have did the Batman Lego. I know he was and he did one of Lego films, and I think he's a pretty good, pretty good director. He was supposed to do a Nightwing film, which never came to fruition, but who knows with, with the new DC. You maybe James Gunn can get him back in the mix, but big fan of the director, really enjoyed this cast. The trailer was fine. You know, they released the final trailer earlier this week. I didn't get a chance to see it uh, because we're so close to the release date. I I don't normally watch final trailers, especially with today's marketing, giving away everything. So I'm just referring to the first trailer. And it was it was okay. Um, from what I'm hearing, they definitely lean into the, the campiness, which, you know, if you're going to Nicholas Cage, Dracula, you know, there's, of course, some campiness to it. And Nicholas Holt, I think he has a really good comedic side to him. If you guys haven't seen, um, the Great, I believe, was the name of the show on Hulu. Uh, I love the first season. Didn't get a chance to watch the second season. I know I think the third season's coming out later this year. But he has a really good comedic side to him that I don't think he gets to flex as much as he maybe wants to. But he's just a great actor overall. And, of course, you know, what else can I say about the great Nicolas Cage? It seems like he's definitely leaning more into the, the, again, like from what I'm hearing so far about the film, he really leans into the campiness of it all. And, and also, to I guess, to set expectations from people that I do know that have seen it. Don't expect him to be on screen a ton. I'm referring to Nicholas Cage. Like he's more, definitely more of a supporting role in this film. This is definitely more of a Nicholas Holt led film with the supporting cast of Aquafina and Ben Schwartz. So um, we'll see, man. I'm hoping to be surprised. Again, I'm going to see it because Dracula, Nicholas Cage, Nicholas Holt, Chris McKay. I, I, I like, a, I'm a fan of all these people involved. So I'm just going to see it from that perspective. But as far as like having a high expectation, We'll see what comes of it. But let me know if you all are excited for Renfield. And, and also, too, for those who are like, what the hell is a Renfield? This is the story of Dracula's kind of minion or, or you know, uh, Nicholas Holtz plays Renfield, who does all his kind of evil deeds of luring people in for Dracula can, you know, do what he does. But uh, Renfield is getting tired of being his little, you know, minion or whatnot. And we're going to see him maybe try to take out the one and only Dracula. So let me know in the, in the comments, guys, again, if you are excited to see this film. So. Before we get into this next topic here, um, someone had asked earlier, shout out to Sully who asked this question earlier. Uh, he had asked me <clears throat> if I can only pick one horror movie release coming out this month uh, between Evil Dead, Rise, Renfield, and Bo is Afraid, which we'll be talking about Bo is Afraid in a little bit. But just to, to answer your question, Sully, and I said it was a, it was a pretty easy question for me. Uh, that leads into what's coming out on the uh, the double header. This is a big day. This is a good double feature coming out on April 21st, which is a Friday. We have Bo is Afraid and Evil Dead Rise. So before I answer your question, Sully, let me talk about Bo is Afraid right quick. Uh, it's funny enough, we were talking about Hereditary earlier, but Bo is Afraid is the new feature film by the great Ari Aster, who I think is two for two, if you ask me, from his uh, two films with Hereditary and, of course, Midsummer. And he also has a couple other short films, and there's a short film that he made, uh, which, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's, I can't think of the name of the film, but it's a, I don't recommend it because it's very, very disturbing. Uh, his, his short film that I can't think of the name of right now. If you all know what I'm talking about, put in the comments now in the chat. But I am a big fan of him as a director. I think he's done a great job. Like I mentioned, uh, Hereditary, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Really enjoyed Midsummer, And he has one of the best actors in his new film playing a, a, a multitude of different characters of a variation of characters throughout his life with the young version of him, middle-aged version of him, and the old version of him. And I didn't see that. I know they release a behind the scenes because it's going to be coming and playing in IMAX, but I didn't watch that because I, I like to go into Ari Aster films kind of blind. I did see the first trailer, and from everything I gathered from the first trailer, it seems like our main character, Bo, who is trying to get to his mother, to me, and this is no inside knowledge or nothing on a Reddit chain, but from what I gathered from the trailer, and you can see my trailer reaction that I did for it because this is a film that was on my most anticipated films of this year, it seems like this character is, is going on this journey to find his mother and I, I say mother in quotation because i don't think his mother is no longer with him because he's talking to her on a voice on, on a phone call and it seems like it's maybe some voicemails but i could be completely wrong with that but he's going on a journey to visit his mom he seems to be kind of locked in his own world he doesn't seem to go out too much and when you see him stepping outside of his house it seems like this world is fantastical things are going on there's chaos there's a lot this is the most 
biggest film that Ari Asher has done from not only a um, this is the biggest cast he has worked with. This is the biggest visual set pieces he's worked with. So this is definitely his biggest film today, and, and rightfully so because he's had some two uh, great films in his filmography. But I'm really looking forward to it, man. Again, it, it definitely seems to lean more into the psychological side of horror more so than like straight up horror than what we got with his first two films with midsummer and uh hereditary but you best believe there will be probably some horrific moments in this movie just based on the trailer but i'm really excited to go on this journey with uh one of the best actors of of our lifetime if you ask me and that's joaquin phoenix playing the lead role as Bo. so very very excited for Bo is Afraid let me know if there's any Ari Aster fans out there let me know if you are looking forward to seeing Bo is Afraid which will be coming to theaters on April 21st but going to answer Sully's question I mentioned there's two films coming out that date and this is this is a great double feature you see Bo is Afraid maybe the afternoon right before it gets late and then you go into the late night to see the next film in the Evil Dead franchise which is Evil dead rise and to just answer my man's question Sully, about which film would i am i most excited if i only had to pick one film it is easily as much as i love ari aster as much as i'm you know semi excited for renfield they don't come close to how excited i am for seeing evil dead rise now i would say as far as me as a fan i appreciate the franchise that has come to be the first one, obviously, you know, a, a great horror film by Sam Raimi. The next two I enjoy, Evil Dead 2 and then Evil Dead Army of Darkness. The second one, the second one, the third one kind of leans more into the campiness, you know, kind of the the uh, a little bit leaning more into the horror comedy genre, which is fine. And it still has tinges of horror because that's what Sam Raimi's great at. And I enjoy them. But out of the three, I would probably say my, my favorite one is the the first one. But then this might be a hot take for you all at home. Um, I believe that the best Evil Dead film, prior to obviously this new one, we'll see what comes of it, but the best one to me is the the remake, Fede Alvarez's Evil Dead, 2014 remake. That is one of my favorite horror films of all time, and I think it's one of the greatest remakes of all time, uh, if I'm being honest with you all. So I, I put that one above all of them. That is my favorite Evil Dead film, the Fede Alvarez film. If you guys haven't seen it, it's bloody. It's gory. It's, you know, the Mia character is so fantastic, and it's kind of an allegory. She's so, if you guys haven't seen it, you know, if you've seen Evil Dead, it takes place in a cabin, which red flag number one. But she's dealing with um, uh, a drug addiction. She's trying to go cold turkey. And I thought it was just an interesting metaphor to have her literally facing her demons, right? Uh, metaphorically and literally. Uh, I love that film so much. And I was so bummed that we never saw a follow-up to that, which was slated to happen. If you guys have seen the film, there's a little little stinger at the end, alluding to a potential crossover that never came to be. But who knows what the future holds. But uh, obviously this one doesn't have, you know, we haven't had Ash in a couple of films. I know I didn't watch the Evil Dead show, which I heard was great. And I think it ended kind of abruptly. I don't think it was supposed to end the way it did as far as the creators thinking they had one more season uh, to go. But unfortunately, they didn't get that final season. And I think they had three seasons, two seasons of the Evil Dead series. Uh, what was it? Ash versus Evil Dead, if I'm not mistaken. But this film here. Oh, my goodness. I, I can't even express how excited I am from this film. Number one, again, this might be another hyperbole coming from your boy. This was one of the best trailers I've seen in such a long time. If you guys have not seen the Red Band trailer for Evil Dead Rise, it doesn't give away too much, which is another thing that I love about the marketing so far of this, this movie. It hasn't really given away too much. It's a pretty simple premise. Uh, you have a, a mother who is getting possessed. You have her sister there, which I believe when they initially announced this film, it was going to take place in a high rise. And I believe they said there's going to be some drug addiction going on. I think the sister who doesn't have kids dealt with drugs and she had her big sister kind of lean on and help her get it out, get, get out of that, you know, that, that vice that she had. But now the tables have turned because now the little sister is going to have to help the big sister get unpossessed and there's kids involved there's a cheese grater involved there's just so much juiciness going on with that first trailer i love every second of it they captured the tone they captured it so beautifully the 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 crazy angles that we're so used with with the evil dead universe especially you know coming from the great sam raimi 
I'm so excited for this film. It sucks so much that unfortunately Warner Brothers is not giving us St. Louis market. The critics won't be seeing it, unfortunately. So I've been in touch with the actual studio to try to see if I can get a, a early screener uh, some way, somehow. Uh, so we'll see what comes to that. But even if I don't get to see it early, I will be seeing this film regardless because <laughs> this is one of my most anticipated films for the rest of this year. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this film just because, again, from what I've heard also, because they played, they premiered at Sundance, uh, well, not Sundance, but South by Southwest. And everyone's just talking about, oh, my goodness, the blood, the gore, the the, the craziness is all there. So I, I'm, I'm super uber excited about it. Again, I'm bummed that I won't be seeing it uh, a little bit in advance, but that's no issue because I will be seeing this. Uh, and it might actually work out for the better because, honestly, you know, I don't get to see as many films with a, like a, a normal audience because I do get to, you know, uh, not to – flex or anything but i do get to see films as, as a press screener and sometimes when you see it as a press you don't get that same energy with a you know a general audience so it will be pretty exciting to actually see this with the with a crowd of people um for the first time so i'm really looking forward to it man uh, again that trailer is one of my favorite trailers for a very long time that i've seen and i'm just ready to get wicked i'm ready to get bloody wicked crazy you know and, and, and get it going man so let me know if there's any Evil Dead fans out there, if you all are excited for it. If so, what, if you've seen all the films, what is your favorite Evil Dead, Evil Dead film? Are you like me and believe that the 2014 or 2013 Fetty Alvarez Evil Dead is the best one in the franchise? Let me know if I'm the only one on that island. Uh, and, and like I said, let me know if you all are looking forward to seeing that. So those are all the films. The, and again, there's a ton of other movies coming out this month. Those are the big ones that kind of catch my eye that you all can see or look forward to seeing reviews and different coverages for in the month of April. So again, just to kind of recap, we got the Air movie and Super Mario coming out on Wednesday, April 5th. We got Renfield coming out a couple weeks later on April 14th. And then we have a great double feature with Bo is Afraid and Evil Dead Rise. So like I said, I wanted to do something a little fun. Because we got, you know, 34 people watching live and, of course, people watching the replay. Since we're we're somewhat getting into some type of normalcy with the box office receipts, there's still some not, uh, some unexpected things with a box office. Like, I didn't expect the Shazam 2 to bomb so bad today. I didn't expect Ant-Man Quantumanium to be the least profitable film in that franchise. So there are some weird things going on, but not as weird as obviously 2020 and 2021 with the box office. So for any people that like box office receipts, let me know in the comments, what film do you think will be the most profitable in the month of April? And what is your, and, and we can just keep it domestically what do you think each one of these films will make domestically in its opening weekend so again that is what do you think air will make domestically for its month uh, uh opening uh, i guess you can count it so it comes out wednesday but if we're just community you know cumulative uh box office numbers what do you think air is going to make in its opening weekend and then what do you think super mario is going to make so to answer my own question i can see air doing on its opening weekend which is this coming week I can see it doing <sighs> collectively for that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe 20 to 25 million. If we're looking at box office receipts for that opening weekend domestically, Super Mario. And again, if we're, and I guess I'll t take away that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if we're just looking at the weekend, just to make that three day weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think Super Mario. If it has good word of mouth, which again, they will be releasing the the uh, reactions tonight. I can see this doing north of 100. I'm, 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 I'm at 110 to 115 is what I'm thinking right now, because I know a lot of people are really stoked for it. Uh, you know, video game fans tend to really support these big, more iconic type of IPs. I can see this doing north of 115 million for the three day weekend, for the three day weekend of Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, this is the only one I'm gonna probably make the, the bold position, uh, prediction of like what it's gonna make throughout its theatrical run. The question is for everyone at home watching live in the replay can the Super Mario Brothers movie make a billion dollars? Is the question I have for you all. History will show that it could. Because like I mentioned earlier when I was doing the rundown, Universal and Illumination has been carrying the box office for the uh, animation genre for the last few years. Because again, Disney and Pixar have been putting all their stuff on Disney Plus and it's kind of people are so used to watching these movies at home now that it's kind of hurt the box office for sure. 
And then, of course, there's other animated studios, but, you know, Universal, Illumination, and Pixar, and Disney are definitely top three uh, DreamWorks as well. But the question at home for you all is, do you see this film, regardless of good word of mouth, if it's great, if it's fantastic, if it's terrible? I mean, obviously, that plays a factor into it, but do you see this film making a billion? Is the question I have for you all. I think so. I think it will make a billion, y'all. Uh, again, looking at the rest of the slate for, you know, not only April, but just moving forward in May, obviously we have Guardians to look forward to and, and Fast 10. But I can see, I can see it making a billion, y'all. Because it's, it's the only kid film we're going to be getting for quite a while as far as animated goes. So I don't know, man. I can see this making a billion. Let me know in the chat what you all think. And then Renfield, as far as the answer to the question, three-day weekend, I think Renfield is going to do, I don't, I don't think it's going to do that well. I think it's going to do like 10, 10 million opening weekend on that Friday. Uh, and then Bo is afraid at A24, Ari Asher never really breaks the bank. Uh, I don't really see this movie doing crazy box office numbers. I can see that another kind of 10 to 12 million opening weekend. But when it comes to Evil Dead Rise, y'all, I think this is going to be uh, – what, what did Scream make opening weekend? Scream 6. I think – didn't that, like, do a franchise franchise high? Let's see. Box Office Mojo. Let's see. Scream 6. I think Scream 6 made, like, 50 million, 53, 54 million opening weekend. Um, let's share the screen here. I don't see it doing as well as Scream 6, um, which, okay, $44 million was what it made domestically in its opening weekend, if you all can see that there. And this is Scream 6. Right now, it's at $143 million worldwide, which is, uh, which is great. Definitely deserves it. So opening weekend, at $44 million. I see Evil Dead Rise. Mm. Opening weekend, opening weekend. 28 to 30 million is what I'm feeling in my bones. Um, I think the fans are going to go out to see it. I'm referring to the, the franchise fans. I think horror fans will go out to support it. I think it's going to have a really good word of mouth. April traditionally isn't the greatest month for box office, but I do see it making some movement. And like I said, I'm anywhere between 28 to 30 million, 32 million is where I'm thinking opening weekend for Evil Dead Rise. So those are my bold predictions and, and we'll follow up. I'm going to uh, replay this when we do our rundown next month and, and see how, how far off I was or how close I was uh, and, and see where we land. So uh, let me get to the comments here and see what you guys think the box office receipts will tally up to be for those films. So let me get to the comments here. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let me catch up to the comments. And again, I appreciate all of you all watching live. Uh, happy Saturday. If you guys could hit the thumbs up, uh, of course, share and comment. So let me catch up where I leave off at. Um, uh, okay. I think I was here. Um, Justin saying, speaking of sequels, I always thought that, uh, right, man, it's, it's crazy. And, and they, it's just been so many words about they, they might do a spinoff show. They might do a sequel, but yeah, that's unfortunate. We never got a sequel to that great, uh, dread film, this movie. Air, yeah. Air looks really good. Uh, what's going on rain? Um, oh yeah, I have a nine year old. He's already asked to see this film. He's never seen a play. Oh, you talking about Mario? Yeah. I think it's going to do like, as you all saw from my box office prediction, I think it's going to do really well. Talk about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't talk about that. <laughs> What's up, good? What's going on, Tyrian? Shout out to Tyrian, man. If you're still here, congratulations, man. You just crossed 60K. Uh, well deserved, my friend. And uh, uh, cheers to, to the next milestone of 70 for you, man. But shout out to Tyrian Ray, man. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing good, man. Um, they're banking this will be the first billion. Yeah, I, I think so, Tyrian. As far as we're talking about Mario, yeah. I think I'm going to see Mario next week. There you go. There you go. Um, I'm not feeling. Yeah, that's I said that that K KW. I wasn't feeling that. At least that first trailer. I haven't seen the other ones, but yeah. Again, I'm gonna check it out just because of the genre. Big fan of Super Mario. Excited for years. Like I said, man, there's a lot of people excited for it. Riff, that looks fun. I think it will be that. I appreciate a good camp. Yeah, we need those every now and then. And, and from what I'm hearing, they definitely lean into it. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, more funny than gory. Actually, I heard. I heard it, it I, again. I heard it leans into the campiness, but I also heard it surprisingly very gory. Uh, which well, I shouldn't say surprising because it's dealing with Dracula, but uh, and I think it's rated R, so hopefully they can balance it too. Well, I haven't seen any trailers going in on the concept. Oh, which one, G? I'm sorry, which one? Which one we refer, referring to? I only answer. Oh, 
listen, you already saw my excitement level. I can't wait. Uh, Brandon, I know you're excited for Evil Dead. Big horror fan. <laughs> Uh, wait on your review for but yeah yeah i'm really excited uh for bow is afraid i don't think i'm gonna be i don't think there's a screener for that either this month so i'm gonna have to go out and and and, and check it out on my own accord it's 2013 yeah, 2013 yeah i think when i say 2014 yeah 2013 i, I love that film Creed 3 came out oh the only reason i didn't include because i saw creed 3 in february and if you saw my rundown in february it was one of my favorite films of that month so um so yeah creed 3 was definitely and you, you can see I did a review for it. Me and uh, Chris from Taste Take did like almost two hour, uh, hour and a half discussion about the film. I really enjoyed Creed 3. So I didn't include it in March because I saw it in February. So, yeah. Yeah, I heard it was good. Never saw it because it was like on Showtime or something. I don't have Showtime. So, uh, that's one. Yeah, you talking. Oh, yeah. Let me. And then, uh, G, let me pull it up for just for you. Look at that. Mommy loves you to death. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I love the trailer when she's like, uh, mommy's with the maggots or something like that. Ah, oh, Lewis, I uh, cannot wait. Cannot wait for this round. Uh, let's see. 2023 seems to be on point with horror. Yeah, man. I think we've had some pretty good, pretty good horror films so far. Uh, Megan, Scream 6, uh, and hopefully Bo's Afraid and, 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 um, Evil Dead Rise can continue that trajectory of just really good horror films uh this year and, and and for the last few years to be honest mommy's with them <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> cannot wait netflix miss you too really yeah i didn't even watch it i saw the first one i didn't even watch it i'm not gonna watch it a cheese grater kids yikes yeah just a recipe for a good time <laughs> what's up kevin i gotta see the remake i love all you all, if you're talking about evil dead kevin uh yeah man like i will go grab my my movie i'm gonna all this Evil Dead talks got me. I'm, I'm going to watch that tonight, man. Uh, but yes, Kevin, if you haven't seen Evil Dead, the remake, it's fantastic, man. I do love the Evil Dead franchise, and show was everything I adored about the franchise. Yeah, I haven't seen the show, but I, everyone I know that watched the show said it was fantastic. Alan Sandler is the killer. and Oh, no, wait, no spoilers. Come on now. Um, and I don't even think that's true, but... Let's not do spoilers for a film that I don't think anyone's watching, but still, <laughs> 2013 is good. It's just something about the first one. Yeah, like I, I love the first one, but the 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 the, oh, the the remake to me, it just hits on so many levels for me personally. Uh, Super Mario came out on top, especially because of kids out of school. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. Mario, maybe the highest gross and most profitable. That hard. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it will be uh, as, as far as this month goes. Yeah, make over a million. Um, is that your your box office predictions? Yeah, I definitely see it killing it. Uh, yeah. What's up, David? By the way, how are we doing? Uh, not a billion, but maybe half. Okay, okay, we'll see. Like I said, David, let me pull up another box office receipts for you, man. Um, what was the last Illumination film? Is it Minions? Or three, I don't even know where they're at at this point. Uh, yeah, Minions Rise of uh, of uh, the Gru. Let's see. So this is the last uh, Illumination film, the last Minions film, and that grows. Look at that, almost nine hundred and thirty nine million. Now, of course, this is the what the third one in the franchise, but still, uh, and it made what one hundred and seven million open a weekend uh, last July. So I, yeah, I, I definitely see uh, to David's point here. Uh, I think it's going to easily cross over 500 million within the first couple of weeks. And I think it's going to get closer to a billion, um, if I'm being honest. But we'll see, man. We'll see. Like I said, it got some, some interesting competition. Does it have any kid friendly competition? So it's going to have that kid audience for quite a while. Uh, 350 domestically and then 400 internationally. So that's what a total of 750 altogether. We'll see. We'll see. Haven't gotten back to the theater yet. I can't believe I missed Maverick, Avatar 2 in the theater, shaking my head. What's uh, what's his take? Star Wars film? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's been some good ones, uh, G, uh, as far as some good theatrical movies in the last, uh, last year or so. It could be Mario, multi-generational, multi... Yeah, we'll see, man. I think uh, to your point as far as multi-generational, yeah, we're going to see a lot of people coming out to, to, to see that film. Uh, if you're right, millions... <clears throat> if I heard you right, the minions made a billion. Then yeah, Mar yeah, yeah, the minions. Like I said, the, that was the last one. And, and again, take into account that we're, we're st studios are still and, and theaters are still getting back into a a normal type of routine with movies. The last minions film 
Wait, they only did two millions? I thought that was the third one. I mean, one of the millions. Yeah, I'm looking at it now in Box Office Mojo. The last, I could have sworn there was like three films of the millions. But I guess I'm mixing them up with Despicable. Yeah, Despicable Me has like four movies. But the last millions movie came out before the last one of last year made it 1.1. So, yeah, this they make some big money. So, yeah. Uh, Tyrion with the Super Chat. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, not only do I see it making a billion, I also see it being... <clears throat> also see it getting an animation. Ooh, that's high praise. An, an Oscar nomination for Best Picture for Best Animated. Interesting, interesting. Um, we'll see, Tyrion. That's that's a, you know, um, I mean, to be fair, and this is no disrespect to animation, but I think the Oscars just randomly pick animated movies because it doesn't get as much respect as obviously uh, live action does. But, yeah, I wouldn't be you totally – now I'm thinking about it, Tyrion. I wouldn't be surprised if it just for – by. <laughs> Not even based on the quality, which I hope it's great, but I don't even think by default it's going to end up just making it just by being one of the few animated films that come out this year. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but again, thank you, Tyrion, for the super chat. I appreciate you, man. Again, congrats on that 60K, my friend. I see you, Vidal. That's what I was at. What did I say? 28 to 32? Yeah. And, and again, we'll play it back next month to see you know how far off and, and whatnot that was at. Uh, because it's kid-friendly and not controversial, Super Mario would definitely be big. Yeah, yeah de definitely right. There's no... Um, to my knowledge, there's nothing that would hold it back from other countries playing it. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right, man. Uh, what about Paint with Owen? Oh, I thought that came out last month, but totally uh, forgot about that. Uh, didn't it already come out? The Paint movie? <clears throat> Owen Wilson, did I miss that on the rundown? Um, April 7th, you're right. Yeah, it comes out. Okay, it's an IFC film. Okay. Yeah, I totally, totally forgot to bring that on the rundown. But, hey, that's why we're here. That's why we're live, to bring up the ones I missed. So I appreciate you. What horror movie? Uh, something Tyrone. What about the horror movie? Something Tyrone. Something Tyrone. Oh, you talking about? Was that a horror movie? The Jamie Fox and um, John Boyega uh, movie. If you're from, if that's what you're talking about, <laughs> happened to Tyrone or something like that. I think was the name of it. Yeah, that film was supposed to come out like two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, Justin. But they they pushed it back for I don't know why. Uh, if I'm being honest, but if, if correct me if I'm wrong, Justin, if that's the movie you're talking about. What was it? They cloned Tyrone. I think it was the film you're talking about, man. Um, right now, it's slated to come out. Again, if you're still here, Justin. Uh, they cloned Tyrone. is supposed to come out on Netflix on July 21st. But if I'm not mistaken, it was in production in 2019. It was supposed to come out. In it ended production in 2020. So, yeah, this has been delayed quite a few times. Uh, but, if, again, if that's the film you're talking about, Justin, let me know. Uh, what's up, Zia? What's up? What's up? What's up? Elliot, the day with the spoiler comment. <clears throat> Watch the Room 40X. If it's available for you, it's like being on a roller coaster. It makes you feel like you're in a movie. Oh wow, that's what's up. That's I don't um I don't know if I've ever I don't yeah I don't think I've experienced 40X. Um, but that's definitely something I got to put on the bucket list. Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, that's what you were talking about. Yeah. Um, that was gonna know me. Oh, yeah, they, they call they clone Tyrone was uh Jamie Foxx, John Boega, Tiana Paris, uh coming to Netflix. Yeah, like I'm looking it up now. It's coming out supposedly coming out this summer. So hopefully it's just in uh Keith or Sutherland. Yeah, pretty good cast, man. But yeah, hopefully it comes out this summer, man. If we can check it out. Um, all right. What do you? Oh well, yeah, we'll get into that, Tyree. We get because I'm a big, uh, big Power Rangers fan growing up, so we'll definitely get into that. So again, let me know uh, those watching replay and those that are in the chat. Which of those films do you think will make the most money in the month, and which are you most excited to see in the month of April? So moving on to our streaming services, and that is starting off with Netflix, and this is a show. And again, as I mentioned up top, there's a Netflix literally has a thousand new movies and shows a month, but there's only two that I'm going to be bringing up in today's rundown. Starting off with the series I saw earlier this week, and I can't speak highly enough about it. That is the new Netflix series by the name of Beef. Now, this show is brought to us by Netflix in collaboration with A24. So, hey, if you're not sold already, A24, regardless of how you feel about them, it's always something new with them, right? So we got A24, Netflix, and as you all can see from this little poster here, it is starring two fantastic actors, in my opinion, uh, Stephen Yin and Ali Wong. And we have a show that is, without giving too much away, it's uh, I'll just keep it as simple, as simple as can be. We have two people that experience road rage, 
And let's just say the road rage takes you down this rabbit hole that you would never expect. Um, I won't give too much away. Uh, the embargo is lifted. I think the embargo was on March 18th, but I won't spoil anything for you all. The, the, the show comes out on Wednesday or Thursday of next week or this week, I should say, or next week because it's not Sunday. It is fantastic. I, I tweeted about it when I saw the first episode. I spoke very highly about it. And I st stand by that. It's 10 episodes. They're about 30, <coughs> excuse me, 30, 35. I think the longest episode is like 39 minutes and including credits. It is fantastic. It is so well written. It is incredibly, incredibly well acted. It is uh, one of those stories where, again, you don't expect what comes of these characters and how deep it gets into the psychos of these characters and where they come from and why they do what they do. Some great supporting characters. And again, I, I, I get the, the simple premise is you have two characters that experience road rage and they're trying to, as the title loose, who they got beef. <laughs> it is the, 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 the pettiest beef you'll ever see. Uh, it, oh, it's so much that I did not expect from the show. Uh, it's, it is comedy. It, is, it does have some dark comedy in there, uh, but it also tackles uh, what I think a lot of us suffer from. And that's just, you know, identity crisis, man. Who are you? Where do you come from? What shaped you? What did you experience as a kid that made you react the way you do? What happens when you suppress your anger? What happens when you don't allow yourself to, um, you know, let people know how you really feel? So it's a, it's a show that really is deep, very thought provoking, funny as hell. Uh, very tragic at points, gets very emotional at points, and it's just a show that I'm very excited to talk about with you all in the coming week. I, like I said, I finished it a couple days ago. I'm gonna, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do from coverage. I've spoken to a YouTube buddy of mine, Utaka. We we might do a collab. I don't know if I'm gonna do either a pre-recorded, just kind of a spoiler discussion about it, or if I'm gonna do a live discussion about it. I personally hope this show gets as much buzz as I think it deserves. So um, kind of like Swarm did a couple weeks ago. And I'm telling y'all, man, if you haven't marked your calendars now, do it now. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't steer you all wrong. This is a must-see TV show, and I don't think you'll be disappointed when you all see this film. This is one of those you press play on episode one and you look up five hours later, you watch the whole series. It's that type of show. So, again, I'm very excited to talk about it in the coming days. And, um, again, I'll, I'll figure out how I want to do coverage on it. It's definitely something that we will be talking about on the channel because it is one of those shows that I think by the end of the year might end up in one of my favorite shows of the year, if I'm being honest. It's, it's that damn good. I'm not even, like, no cap. No, no cap on. You know what I'm saying? As the kids say, it is that good. Um, but moving on to the next one. This is and Tyreen actually, you know, brought it up earlier coming out on a Wednesday, and that is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Once and Always. It's a movie uh, coming out, and just a little, little backstory on me, man. This this is my childhood. This is what I grew up on. You know, we talked about Mario earlier. This was my Mario. This was my Pokemon. This was my Digimon. This was my uh, Yukio. This was this is my childhood. This is what I grew up on every Saturday watching these movies. My mom took me to, like, they had, like, a uh, I don't know. A, I don't want to say play. It was like a, I don't even know what you call it. It was like a live action Power Rangers show that I went to as a kid. Uh, owned all the movies. I was watching it up to like Turbo. Uh, you know, I, as I got older, I kind of faded away from the franchise. But these are the OGs, man. Blue, yellow, the goat, Tommy, rest in peace. Uh, Red Ranger, Pink Ranger, Black Ranger. This, this is my childhood, y'all. And it all comes 30 years later. Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, 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 uh, once and always coming out this month. And we got some OGs making the return, Blue Ranger, as well as the Black Ranger. Um, the guy, uh, depending on which side you're looking at, the Red Ranger, I think he was the second second or third generation Red Ranger. I can't remember his name right now. And then you have like a second or third generation Pink Ranger. So you got a couple original characters coming coming back. Obviously, we know um, rest in peace to the to the Green Ranger and the White Ranger. Tommy, you know, he passed away. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, a year? Has it been a year? I think it's been, been a year or like six or seven months he passed away. And, and according to the Pink Ranger, she came out recently and said that she wasn't going to be a part of it. She didn't, she didn't express why. I don't know if this speaks to the quality of the movie, but she said that they shot it before he passed away. So he obviously was going to be, because I was, when I saw the trailer, I'm like, oh man, is that, is that, you know, are they going to bring back the, the you know, uh, the, the Green Ranger and, 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 the, and the White Ranger to, to, to come in the film? But apparently they're not in the movie. Um, but 
I don't know, man. If I'm gonna, as a Power Rangers fan, I'm, I'm pretty far at- detached from this franchise. As far as I haven't seen, I don't watch any of the new ones, and I don't even, I could even tell you what they're doing now. If they're in space, if they're underwater, if they're in another dimension. But um, I know it's still going strong. But I, for nostalgia stake, I'll probably watch it. I'm probably not going to review it, if I'm being honest with you. But I'll probably watch it just for the, the sake of the nostalgia of it all. The Black Ranger returning, the Blue Ranger returning. And, and there might be some surprises. You know, you never know. But uh, let me know if there's any Power Rangers fan. Again, man, this is a, this is a childhood franchise for me. It's something I grew up want, on. And uh, we'll see what the, what the future holds for this film. But I'm not holding my breath. I'm being honest with you all. But those are, again, Netflix has a bazillion things coming out every single month, but those are the two things that kind of caught my attention. And, and, and the biggest one out of those two things is beef. And I can't stress enough, mark your calendars for Thursday, April 6th. You will not be disappointed in the show. I'm really excited to talk more about that show with you all. But let me know in the chat what other movies, other shows that are new to Netflix that you all are most excited to see for the month of April. So before we move on to our next streaming service, let me see what you guys are talking about in the chat before we talk about... Uh, Disney and what's going on, or Apple, and then we'll get to Disney. Um, let me see where I leave off. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, yeah, so yeah, so got, yeah, answer that question for you, Tyrene. I'm not overly excited, but I'll probably check it out. Uh, beef looks good, and it is good, Justin. Like, seriously, it is. Uh, I'll you won't be, I'm telling y'all, man, I will not steer you wrong. You will not be disappointed. Cool, beef sounds good. I'll check. Yes, uh, now you're hungry. <laughs> I will be watching beef. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm not lying to you all. You, you will love that show. Trust me. Um, probably movie in my house for sure. It's a staple for sure, for sure. Uh, and E we trust. Got it. Yeah, I'm telling y'all, man. And you know, I think you guys have been um supporters of the channel for a while. All the OGs are in the chat now, so you know, I don't, I wouldn't just be blowing smoke up you guys' rear ends. This is a show that I think will be one of the best shows this year. Like, no lie. Uh, Oscar nominated Stephen Young, however, however, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I got to figure out uh, how I'm going to handle it. But uh, And for any Marvel fans, literally, Stephen Yin, the creator of the show, Lee Sung Jin, I believe is his name, he wrote like 99% of the episodes. He was the creator of the show. He has been announced to write the the rewrite, the Thunderbolt. So he's on, on the Marvel side now. And then the director, Jack Schaefer, I think his name is, he directed like seven of the 10 episodes. He's the director of the um, Thunderbolt. So my Thunderbolts level was around like here, but now it's like through the roof because after seeing Beef, I'm super excited to see what they have. So yeah. Loving, loving Beef. Uh, got some hearts in the chat. Uh, for, the, for the, yeah, for, for, um, uh, uh, the Green Ranger and the White Ranger, yeah, shout out to, um, and not shout out, but rest in peace, yeah. Um, reading the comics, lives up to the quality. Nice. See, I, I never got into the comics of it all, but, I, you know, I played the video games, of course, watched the shows, watched the movies, so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the, the kids don't know nothing about them. The OG Power Rangers, man, the OGs. Yeah, I'll be watching Power Rangers. <laughs> Hard pass. Hey, I don't blame y'all, man. It, it, the, the trailer was like, oh man, they, they they're older. They're older now. <laughs> uh Elliot, when is the next watch party show? I'm itching for that. Um next watch party, huh? That's a good question. Power Rangers? <laughs> hey, I'm not I'm joking, but maybe not. It is April Fool's Day. I don't know. We might we might do a Power Rangers watch party, man. Nah, uh, we'll see. But um Probably the next one, realistically. Um, probably a TV show, and it's probably a succession. We'll probably do a watch party for any succession fans for the finale. Uh, Barry, which we'll talk about Barry here in a second. We'll probably do something for that. So it's probably that's next the next TV show watch along. But as far as movie goes, we haven't done a movie watch along since the Batman. I think was the last movie watch along I did, or or. Doctor Strange, one of the two. But yeah, we got to figure out a movie watch along. I can say, man, we might watch Power Rangers together. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I, I love those those watch parties. I'm glad you guys are, are fans of those. So we'll, we'll figure out a movie to watch together. But definitely Succession finale, series finale, and Barry's series finale will probably be two shows that we will be doing a watch party for. 
All right, y'all. So moving on to and actually before we move on again, 33 watching live or hour and seven minutes into the stream. I thank you all for joining me on this Saturday. You can be mowing your lawn, going out for a swim, having a having some beef, <laughs> uh, or going to the movies, or just having enjoying your life. So the fact you all are watching me live, I mean, uh, means a lot to me, and I appreciate you. Again, if you all are having a good time, enjoying the coverage, enjoying the discussion, hit the thumbs up, share, comment, and if this is your first time watching. Hey, uh, very uh, uh, appreciative of you joining and uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already. So, and again, that goes for the people watching on the replay as well. So, all right, y'all. So moving on to Apple TV Plus. If you've been a part of this community for a while, you know, I'm a big advocate for Apple TV. I think they have some of the best quality out there. Um, and I don't know if I can say quality is something that comes to mind when I see this poster in this trailer. Ghost it. Starring two incredible actors, in my opinion, Chris Evans, uh, and then Anna the Armist. I mean, boy, what would I? What, how much would I pay to be in his position on this poster? I don't know, um, but uh, you know, I pay top dollar. <laughs> Big fan of these two, uh, Chris Evans. If you guys don't know, he is the goat in my eyes as far as Marvel goes. Captain America, all day, every day. I took his side during Civil War. Uh, and I still think he's out there somewhere on the moon for my Marvel fans. But now a big fan of Chris Evans really have been enjoying the the career that Anna de Armas has carved out for herself from I think the first film I saw her in was was it Knock Knock with Keanu Reeves? A kind of small independent horror film. It was an okay horror film, but you know, she stood out to me. Um I'm like, okay, she just might be someone to keep an eye out for. Then I think the next time I saw her was in War Dogs, her Jonah Hill and Miles Teller. And then from there, the thing that really kind of caught my attention in such a beautiful way, her performance in one of my favorite, talk about remakes earlier with Evil Dead, one of my favorite remake of all time. Well, it's not even a remake, but like the continuation or a, a sequel after many years was Blade Runner 2049. That is a film that I much more prefer than the original. No, no disrespect to the OG uh, Blade Runner, but I much more prefer 2049 over the original. And I thought her as love was just captivating i was mesmerized by her performance and so ever since then that was 2017 i've been a fan of hers like a like a serious fan of hers and she's really carved out a really good career man i, I loved her and then you know most recently in james bond i thought she was great in, in knives out um i didn't enjoy uh blonde you can see my review for that film very very uh disturbing movie but uh, her performance was great. Uh, I thought she was great in that film. And I'm, I'm really excited to see her in the ballerina. But, man, ghosted, man. Have y'all seen this trailer, man? Like, I didn't know we were in the in the, in the the 2000s, early 2000s, kind of a rom-com. If you guys haven't seen the trailer, I think the, the poster kind of uh, might explain. Well, not really. This poster, you know, if you don't know what this film is about, you might think this is like a, a something you might find on, on a on a website that we will not name, but <laughs> but listen, the, the premise of the film is Anna de Armas is a well, I don't know if I should give it a it's not it's not a spoiler, they give it in the trailer, but her and Chris Evans, who's just a normal guy, they hit it off, and as the title alludes to, she ghosts him. Uh, he gets caught up in some he like finds her and like stalks her, I think, like follows her, and he gets kidnapped. He's in this underground bunker. Like, what do you know? Give us some information. He's like, oh, what are you talking about? I'm just a normal guy. And lo and behold, Anna de Armas saves him. And she's like some spy. And he gets entangled in this whole spy espionage situation. And again, the trailer looked pretty, pretty bad to me. Um, but I'm going to probably watch it just because I'm a fan of these two. But I'm not like expecting this to be anything good um but yeah that's that's the one thing that caught my eye from apple tv plus like i said they're they they always have a at least a new show coming out or they have a return of a show there's not a lot of stuff coming out in april but as i said before as i always talk about apple if you guys haven't and this is no you know i would love to be sponsored by apple one day but i really do advocate for them as far as streaming services go i think they're one of the best streaming services out there from a quality perspective they don't have as much quantity as uh, as 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 netflix or amazon or even disney at times but they definitely have quality so based on that statement this film might surprise me we'll see we'll see i mean these are two big actors i don't think they would just kind of you know this this would be like a career move that you would do to start off your career 
they're both established actors. So I don't think they would be wasting their time with some trash. So hopefully I'm wrong, man. Hopefully this is like a really good film. So like I said, that was the one main thing that caught my eye for Apple. But before we move on, let me know if there's any uh, fans out there of Ghosted, if you're excited for it, before we get into our next one, which is Disney. Uh, a watch for, okay, we, we'll see, Justin. It might just be me and you, but we'll see. Uh, watch, uh, or maybe do, ooh. That's a good. That, that, we might do that, Justin. We might do a watch party for one of the Evil Dead's, uh, if not the the most recent one, the remake. So yeah, when is Seven's gonna be back? I don't know. Uh, gee, I think as of right now, the last thing I read was they finished production a month ago, and I would imagine since it's not a super, you know, production heavy post production show, maybe by fall. Hopefully, the fall of this year, we'll get the new season of uh, Severance. But again, I'm not rushing them. I want the show to take the time, make it as great a season one as it can be. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, they don't give G. I feel like they don't don't give G. Am I, am I miss them. Um, but shout out to Vera. How you doing? How you doing? Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, I'm a fan of the two actors, so we'll see what comes of it. I feel like they don't have enough chemistry for a movie like this. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. That that was the thing too when I saw the trailer. I'm like, yeah, the chemistry is kind of off, but maybe it's so, sometimes it's kind of hard for people to cut trailers properly. So I thought Ghost was on Netflix. Apple TV was a quality movie. So yeah, yeah, you're right. I thought it was Netflix too. Um, yeah, you're right, uh, Justin. Because didn't they have that? Netflix had that trailer thing earlier this year. And I could have sworn it was a Chris Evans movie. And I think he has another movie coming out. Let me actually look that up because I think you're. You guys are, are, are know what uh, Justin saw about. They did that Tadum thing, and they showed like all their new movies for the year. And I could have sworn there was Chris Evans in that trailer, but maybe he has another film coming out because he had a similar haircut and everything too. So uh, super random. But I just wanted to check that out, Justin, to see if it, at one point if it was coming out on Netflix and they switched it up. Um, oh, hold on, maybe it's this one, the red one. Is that coming to Netflix? Oh no, that's the Amazon. Him and the Wayne Rock Johnson. Um, Pain Hustlers, maybe. Maybe that's the one we saw. Oh yeah, okay. So just I think the one I'm I think that we're talking about in that to dumb presentation is a film called Pain Hustlers coming out later this year. It's uh, Emily Blunt and Chris Evans, Andy Garcia, um, Jay Dubas, and. Uh, directed by David Yates, who, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for Harry Potter fans, isn't David Yates the guy that did all the Harry Potters, or at least the majority of them, in the Fantastic Beasts film? So, yeah, just I think that's the one that you're referring to is um, Pain Hustlers coming to Netflix. So, yeah. Yeah, it's giving me, that's what I'm saying, giving me those early 2000 vibes for sure. Um, all right, y'all. So let's move on to our next one here. I listen, man. That's what I'm saying, man. I, I, I see servant morning show severance foundation. Um, the banker, all their movies, 80% of their shows I've covered Apple. I mean, I don't even get merch. Can you send your boy some shirts that I can give away to you all? I mean, Apple, if you're watching this, hit your boy up. You know what I'm saying, man? It's like, it's crazy. It's crazy out here. <laughs> Maybe one day, one day, but, uh, let's talk about Disney, man. And again, another, uh, streaming platform that didn't have a ton of stuff that caught my eye. There's a, a new series with uh, Jeremy Renner and called Reservation, I believe. It's like a uh, it's like him with other celebrities doing stuff. I don't know. Uh, and shout out to Jeremy Renner. He's he's doing better. I saw the little trailer they did for him, his first interview since the incident. So he seems to be doing better. So that's the only like new thing I saw from Disney Plus. So and this is kind of leads to a conversation I want to have. So the big thing that will be ending in uh, the month of April is the third season, the finale. For any Star Wars fans out there, how are we enjoying or maybe not enjoying this new season of The Mandalorian? Um, I haven't covered the show. I covered season one and two, but honestly, the algorithm, I don't know what it is, doesn't do well for me for Star Wars content. When I covered the first two seasons, the traction of those videos weren't that great. Uh, I covered Andor. Those videos didn't do that great. So I'm like, you know what? That's a sign that YouTube was like, E, stick to your other stuff. Star Wars isn't, isn't there's no audience for you, uh, at least for now. Uh, but either way, 
it is a show that I, I watch in my free time, which is as a content creator. Uh, there are some shows that you just got to watch on your own, right? You can't cover everything. So I have been watching The Mandalorian on my own time. Haven't seen episode five yet. Her is pretty good. But if I'm being honest with you all, <clears throat> am, I, am I the only one that feels like, man, The Mandalorian just ain't hidden? Like it used to, man. Season one and two was fantastic. And not, not that I'm not enjoying season three. It's just not as, number one, there's not a, not a lot of buzz on the show like it was in the first two seasons. Um, from just a content creator perspective, I don't see people doing a ton of breakdowns, you know, live discussions, watch parties, all that stuff that they were doing for season one and two. I don't see that for the new season. I might be missing it, but I Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't see the same amount of excitement as it was for the first seasons, first two seasons. And again, for any Star Wars fans out there, I just I'm just curious. I just want to have a brief conversation with you all. What, what do you think is the the reason for that? Is it two shows that were kind of lackluster? If you ask me, the Book of Boba Fett, which was I wasn't a big fan of that. The Mandalorian was good in that show, those two episodes, but overall, I wasn't a big fan of that. Obi Wan Kenobi was a huge disappointment for me. There were some moments, right? There were some moments it had. But overall, I thought it was pretty lackluster. Uh, Andor was fantastic. I still have to finish it, but the episodes I've seen were, were terrific. But I'm just curious on where Star Wars stands for you all. Do you not care about it as much? Are you like disappointed that the movies haven't come out? You know, that's been a big topic of discussion that I've seen on online. It's like, where are the movies? You know, it's been since 2019 was with um, Star Wars, the rise of uh, the Skywalker. You know, it was four years ago, which, by the way, the you know. I will say, uh, the the the, in, the itching and the where are the movies is is kind of a funny conversation to me because you know if we go back to the the movie slates with the original Star Wars, you know it was almost twenty plus years since from the original trilogy, and then in, in, in the early eighties we didn't get another Star Wars film to ninety nine, so it was like a sixteen year gap, and then once we ended that trilogy, the the prequel trilogy that was what two thousand four two thousand five with the Revenge of the Sith, we didn't get another film to twenty fifteen, uh, so I mean. The patience is, I, I understand how people want more Star Wars films, but this is kind of part of the course. There's huge gaps between the films. But again, to to the argument of like, well, the whole idea of like why Disney did the acquisition is to make it more frequently that we would see more Star Wars movies. But if you ask me, I'm okay with them not making movies right now because they are in a disarray. They are, they don't know their left from their right, what's up, what's down, what's, what, they don't know anything right now. So I'm, I'm okay with them not doing movies at the moment because I don't think they have a plan. And I do not want to see what they did with the trilogy of the, the sequel trilogy when it's just like, oh, you do a movie, you do a movie, and we'll try to make it come together. So, yeah, I, I'm okay with them taking their time. Apparently, next weekend, we're going to get an announcement of three new Star Wars movies. We'll see what comes of that. Um, but, I mean, every time I look up, Kevin Feige is producing a Star Wars film. That's not happening anymore. Um, you know, they had poor patty jenkins came out did a whole mini movie talking about her dad being a pilot and, and how star wars means so much to her and how she was going to do a movie and that was shelved they uh the dudes from game of thrones ever since the finale of game of thrones their whole thing that they were going to do shelve ryan johnson's new trilogy haven't heard anything about that for years so and then don't even mention what happened with the um uh, the solo film directors and what happened with the the Boba Fett film with Josh Shrank and it's been so many ups and downs. So again, I just wanted to just briefly before we wrap it up because we want to wrap it up with HBO. What, what where do you where are you all at with Star Wars? Are you a fan? Are you are you not as excited? Are you not even interested in it anymore? Let me know. Let me know. Just curious. And and how do you feel about the Mandalorian? Do you feel like it's been kind of lackluster this season? Just curious, just curious, just curious. Um, but let me get to the comments here. Uh, LOL, that's what I'm saying. Right? Can, can I get a shirt, a hat, something, Apple? I mean, damn. I mean, I got your phone. I got your Apple TV. I watch your shows. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, what about Peter Pan? Oh, if I'm being honest, G. Peter Pan slipped my mind. Uh, that does come out at the end of the month. Um, it's coming to Disney Plus. You're so right. Um, I wouldn't say I'm overly excited for it. I do love the director. Uh, I believe it's Dave Lowry, who, um, if I'm mistaken, is a director. If you guys know Dave Lowry, you know how much I'm a fan of his work. Um, Green Knight was one of my favorite movies in the last few years. And he also did... Uh, yeah, is Dave Lowry doing... 
Win, uh, Winnie the Pooh. Is he doing Peter Pan? Uh, Dave Laurie. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Okay. Okay. So, gee, you know what? My excitement just kind of went up a couple notches because, again, Dave Laurie is like one of the best underrated directors to me. Peace Dragon was fantastic. The, the live action from 2016. Ghost Story was okay. I wasn't the biggest fan of that. I didn't see the old man, the gun didn't see, oh, he didn't do the yellow birds, but the green Knight was one of my favorite films of the last decade. I love that film so much. It came out in 2021. It's my favorite film that year. So gee, just for the simple fact that he's attached to it. Um, I'm going to probably watch it just because he's so great. So yeah, but n naturally though, I'm not a big Peter Pan fan. So that's why it wasn't on my list. Is that man coming Disney plus? Is it? If they, if it has, they, it's completely run on the radar. It came out in February. I think they're 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 going away for that forty five day window thing. But if if that is the case, yeah, it should be coming out in February. Hey, maybe that's the next watch party. We'll do a watch party for Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Uh, I love Star Wars stuff. Well, hey, let me know, man. How do you feel about Star Wars right now? And everyone in the chat last episode was yeah, I heard it was good, so I got I got to check that out. Uh, you're enjoying season three. Listen, I'll say this about season three. Uh, I love Katie Sackoff. I love Bo Katan. I love that they've been focusing on like. The show is called The Mandalorian. So, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, have fallen in love with Grogu and fallen in love with Din, but it is called The Mandalorian. So we're now seeing, we're, we're finally kind of exploring other Mandalorians. So I do enjoy that aspect, but I do feel like Din and Grogu's story has been kind of put on the back burner. But um, I don't know. I feel like it, it's just, it's not as... <sighs> The story hasn't been as enticing as the first two seasons because I still, and again, I haven't seen the latest episode, but I still don't know where we're going this season. Uh, you know, he's bathed in a bath of, of, of Mandalore. He's, you know, I thought IG-11. I don't know if that's still the plot that's going to be uh, coming coming to head. Uh, there's obviously something going on with the clones uh, with that one episode that we got. was that episode three with when they were on um, uh, uh the, the scientists and the and the and the the spy. So I mean, they, they're building something, but I just don't know where we're going so far. But yeah, I don't know what it is about Mando season three, but I don't feel myself rushing. That, that's what I'm saying, just like the fact that I haven't even seen episode five to me speaks, at least to my experience. Because again, when season one and two was out, I was watching those. I was I didn't I don't stay up at three o'clock in the morning to watch anything, but that morning I was watching it because number one I didn't want to get spoiled because if you go on Instagram and Twitter it spoils all the time so I didn't want to get spoiled but number two I was like genuinely excited to see the next episode but now I'm just like it's Saturday and I haven't even seen the latest episode but that's, that's just me but um but yeah I haven't seen season three um off the strength of being yeah like I said the, the, the online buzz just isn't really there I think a lot came together in the last episode okay I'm glad that here is it's kind of building somewhere. I'm loving the Mandalorian episode five. Okay, everyone's saying that so far. So hell, I'm gonna be watching the Mandalorian tonight, uh, the next episode, and then uh, rewatching Evil Dead. <laughs> I missed the Western vibes of the first season for sure. Gotcha. Who directed episode five, by the way? Um, I know Carl Weathers did episode four. Who directed episode five? I know apparently um, Bryce Dallas Howard's directing next week, which is exciting because I think she's she's a fantastic. Um, Elliot, please tell me you cover Euphoria. Yeah, man, you, you best believe covered season one. And then, uh, for season two, I did a week to week breakdowns. We did live, we did the, we did the after show. So yeah, just Google, you can look it up. I have a whole playlist for Euphoria. I'm a big fan of that show. And who knows if we're going to get season three with all the controversy behind that Apple or Amazon need to make a movie show about the drama surrounding Euphoria. <laughs> exactly. Justin. there's a lot of stuff going on with that show. Xavier, what's up, man? I think the season of Mando just seems like it's taking too long to go anywhere. Exactly. I missed the feel of the past season. That's where I'm at. I'm like, where, where are we going? Where are we going? Uh, shout out to Vera with the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, she says, Rise of Skywalker is a big old yikes. Yeah, I've literally only seen that movie one time. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But thank you again, Vera. Um, yeah, Phil. That's my least favorite out of the new trilogy. Uh, and, and listen, this might be, I don't hate the film, but it's not great. Uh, yeah. Uh, Star Wars feels the last shot I was never recovered. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right, man. So right. I hear you, Elliot. Uh, Disney Star Wars. It's, yeah, they do. It's like the, the, every time they announce the director's like <laughs> April Fool, the joke's on us. It's not going to happen. So I'm, I'm curious next week, uh, again, a Star Wars celebration. Um, I'm sure we're going to get some more Ahsoka news. We're going to probably get some, um, uh, um, Acolyte news, which I'm actually looking forward to the Acolyte, and I'm actually looking forward to Ahsoka too. 
Um, but I'm sure there'll be some trailers for both of those shows. And I'm also sure there'll probably be some content around, um, the skeleton crew, which is the new show, uh, I believe executive produced by John Watts, the director of all three Spider-Man, most recent Spider-Man films. And they have a hell of a crew. They got the Daniel brothers directing the episode. I believe <clears throat> I read the other day, speaking of Do Dave Laurie, I believe he's directing an episode of Star Wars. So Skeleton Crew is quietly going up to my radar. But my most anticipated show in the next coming years for Star Wars uh, is easily the Acolyte. I'm really excited to see what that show is all about. Never cared about Star Wars. Hey, I know some people aren't a fan. I love that picture, by the way, of Maxine from Living Color uh, or Living Single. Love it. Uh, still a Star Wars fan, um, but nervous about the future. Yeah, it's 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 pretty shaky ground right now. I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm more interested in TV shows. Yeah, I'm the same way, man. I, I'm I'm been uh, making. Uh, I much prefer the shows right now than the movies. Star Wars is hard to follow for me, at least. It, it, it's a hard thing to get into. I'll tell you that because it's a, there's not only movies, but there's animated shows, there's comics, uh, there's books. It's a lot of stuff to gotta get into the lore. Yeah, I agree. And and apparently that, that was what the Damon Lindelof film was supposed to tackle, who got replaced recently. Um, but apparently his film was supposed to follow the continuation of Ray, um, Finn, Kylo Ren, and you know, Poe Dameron and all that stuff. So we'll see what comes of whatever that new film's gonna be. Uh not yet, John, but we will. We will here in a bit. I'm just gonna uh wrap up these comments and get to our final topic, which is HBO Max Peter. As we directed the episode, that name sounds so familiar. Peter, is that the director of the new Spider-Man film, or one one of the directors? Um, so work he's done like Disney stuff, Pixar stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's dope, man. He's he's done <clears throat> quite a few animated stuff. He's gonna be the he's the co-director of the new Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Um he did okay, he's doing a soca. Okay, awesome. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of his work. So very excited to see what he did at episode five. That's great to hear. It's great to hear. Uh speaking of April Fools, the worst prank on me was IG in one of the fake trailer Star Wars show called The Fury of Maul. Monetize that. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. I don't remember that. That's funny though. Uh I'll take Dune. You'll take Dune. Oh, over Star Wars. Ooh. I mean, hey, Frank Herbert's book inspired Star Wars and Star Trek. So you're not, you know, I love Dune. I love that whole universe, Arrakis, and can't wait to go back to see Dune Part Two. Denis Villeneuve is gonna, whew, can't wait for that. If you saw my most anticipated films of the year, that was number one. So yeah, I'm very, very excited for Dune. I wonder if they are getting away from Din on Amando because Pedro Pascal wanted to be shown. With... No, I think uh, Veer. I mean, there might be some validity in that, but I thought that that was debunked. That that whole rumor controversy behind the scenes was not true. Like people made it out to be. So, but he's also he's a busy man. He's got The Last of Us. Uh, he's obviously still making movies. So. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I think that Dave Filoni and, and John Farrell just really want to expand the other Mandalorians, and I wouldn't be surprised, speaking of next week, I wouldn't be surprised if they announce a, a Bo-Katan spinoff series because she she's great. I love Bo-Katan. Um, so, yeah, I think they're just expanding more. But um, I'm excited to see... <coughs> excuse me. I'm excited about all the upcoming shows. Yeah, this is Ahsoka... The Acolyte, the Skeleton Crew, I'll be watching. We have a uh, hangout uh, to get, um, yeah, Thrawn. He's apparently coming, right? <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah, Thrawn and Ezra, which, again, I don't, I'm saying these names like I know who they are. I, I didn't watch Rebels or um, Clone Wars, but I'm, I'm familiar with those characters. So I'm excited to see their live action debut. Yes, No Way Home. Yeah, yeah, John Watts, yeah, yeah. He's, he's the co-producer or executive producer of the skeleton crew so yeah all right y'all so getting to our final topic and we'll wrap it up and, and maybe do a q a and, and call it a day and uh let's go to our last breakdown and that is hbo max baby which i talked about apple earlier i think uh hbo is still the king when it comes to content uh so coming out this month and this breaks my heart to say y'all but uh one of my favorite shows ever it's coming to an end, and that is Barry. Season four. As you can see from the, the little headline there, the arresting final act, y'all. 
if you haven't been watching Barry these last few years, you're missing out on one of the greatest shows, in my opinion, uh, to hit the TV screens in quite a quite a while, man. I'm I'm a big fan of this this character. I'm a big fan of the show. Uh, Bill Hader has proven to be one of the best minds in Hollywood from a directional standpoint, the writing standpoint, an acting standpoint. He's he's just a, a triple threat, man. I love the show so much. Uh, the most recent season was fantastic. Um, and, and I don't want to spoil anything, but I mean, if you, if you, if you look at the poster here and you look at the stuff I got going on here, you, you see where Barry's at. He's in jail. He's in jail. But, uh, how did he get there? I guess you got to watch it. If you haven't seen it again, I highly recommend it again, by all means, watch it. <laughs> it is so great. Uh, and if, for those, you know, elevator pitch, it's a hitman turn actor. Uh, Barry is a hitman. He, he, he gets paid to kill people. He makes his way. He's tired of doing it, uh, and he wants to become an actor, and we watch him try to do that. But at the same time, he's still killing people as, a, as an actor, trying to be an actor. So it's it's one of those shows where you're just like watching it because, number one, it's great writing, it's great acting, but then you're just like, how is he going to continue to get away with this? Uh, but like I said, if you've seen the trailer and if you've seen season three and if you see these posters – so consequences finally catch up to him. But uh, I, I love this show, man. I'm sad to see it go. I appreciate, though, that it will be ending because I've always said that Barry has about a four to five year run before it starts to get repetitive and you start to be like, OK, now it's getting out of hand and he's able to get away with all this stuff. So I'm glad I always love to see the show in on a high and they have a plan. And that's the same thing with Succession, as we talked about last week, because that's on its final run, too. So um, very sad, but also very excited to see what this fourth and final season has for us. I will be covering it like I did last year. Um, so looking forward to see what Barry season four has up its sleeve. And if you guys have, like I said, if you haven't watched Barry, it is fantastic. There's obviously four seasons, um, but it's something I would recommend you all maybe give it a watch. If you don't enjoy the first episode, then maybe it's not for you. But I think by episode one, you're going to be hooked. And they're, they're easy watches, 30 minute episodes boom bam and you're out of there so i love that show uh but speaking of loving hopefully we have a show that i, I might fall in love with um and i think everyone loves this this actress here and that is coming out april 27th love and death new limited series um starring the one and only elizabeth olsen who has been you know uh always been in a hot, the spotlight since she was a kid obviously her sisters uh being one of the reasons but also she just really been building her own career and one of the best actresses in Hollywood, if you ask me. Of course, a lot of us know her from her Marvel, you know, experience and, and continuation, hopefully, with Wanda. Uh, but she's just a, a great actress overall. And Love and Death is the new limited series coming to HBO. And man, this cast is freaking fantastic. Not only do we have the great Elizabeth Olsen, but you also have the likes of Jesse Plemons, who I think is a very underrated, underappreciated actor in Hollywood. You also have the likes of... Um, you know, uh, Dave Kelly, who's going to be writing the show. If you guys don't know, Dave Kelly is the king of drama, the king of tea. So I'm really excited to see what he writes with this show. And listen, man, I know briefly about this story, which is based on a novel, which is based on true events where this uh, this wife, uh, you know, very religious family, you know, seems to be a, a good wife, a husband. She's married to Jesse Plemons' character, and she has an affair with uh, – oh, no, she's not married to Jesse Plemons. She's married to, I think – I don't know who's playing her husband in the show, but she is a married woman. She's a church, you know, God-fearing woman, and she gets into an affair, and lo and behold, someone ends up dead. Uh, the the wife, I believe the wife of the husband that she's having an affair with dies, and I don't know. The, I never looked up, like, what the verdict was. I assume she was found guilty. I, maybe she wasn't. But <clears throat> in the last few years, there's been, like, two or three different shows. I know... Jessica Bill had a show about this show or show about this story. And I think they had like there's a couple movies about it. So I don't know the end result. So I'm going to probably give this one a watch because it has just a, an incredible cast and it has, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan for murder mysteries. So I don't know, man, love and death. Elizabeth Olsen. Will you guys be checking it out coming April 27th into this month? Let me know if you guys are excited for it. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna probably watch it, and we'll see what the traction is uh, as far as, like, weekly episode breakdowns. We'll see what comes of that, but uh, I'm going to check it out, man. So let me know in the chat, guys, if you guys are looking forward to Love and Death starring the great Elizabeth Olsen. Um, but, yeah, let me get to these comments, and we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. But uh, where did I leave off at? Um, let me see. Let me see. 
Pedro Pascal is busy. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, Pedro Pascal is super dead. <laughs> Uh, I'm so behind on Barry, but it's so good. Yeah, Maxine, if you get a chance, definitely. Which, which, where'd you leave off at? Are you a uh, season behind, two seasons behind? Let, let me know. Let me know. Justin, never seen. Uh, Justin, I'm telling you, bro. You know me, man. I wouldn't steer you wrong. Definitely recommend checking out Barry. Uh, the way I turn on you down. Oh, my bad. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't spoil anything. I mean, if you, if you listen, if you've seen the posters, you know, you, it kind of alludes to what happens. But yeah, I won't say what happens at, at season three because there were some big, big things that happened. So I, I won't, I won't say anything else. I won't say anything else. But if you guys haven't seen Barry, highly recommend it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All they, I, I have a confidence they will, not only because, uh, it's proven track record, but Bill Hader's directing all the episodes of season four, which is going to be, uh, incredible. Because I think all his episodes he's directed have been some of the best episodes. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I agree, loving. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Max, I skipped over your comment here. Uh, I agree, loving. Yeah, uh, again, I hate to see, you know, Atlanta has ended. Um, like I mentioned, uh, we're on the final season with uh, um, Succession, and obviously we mentioned Barry, and, you know, but I, I much per, prefer shows to end on a high note than just milking it out and coming up with these stupid ass storylines. So yeah, I much prefer ending on a high note. So it's sad to see him go, but you know, also yeah, I know, right? That's just like the recipe for greatness. WandaVision, yeah, it was a great show. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Let me know if you guys if you guys saw the other show with Jessica Biel, uh, if it was if it was any good. <clears throat> And I think it's weekly too. I don't, I don't think it's like a binge. I think it's a weekly thing. Yeah, David. Like I said, if you guys, David, know David Kelly's record, track record, he's fantastic, man. He's I, I've been a fan of his since like Ally McBeal, and then the last like few HBO shows with The Undoing and and uh, um, Big Little Lies. He's he's he he knows drama. He knows drama, man. Who did OK series? Okay, that's the Hulu. Yeah, it was. It was, it was just okay. Yeah, that's. I had. A, I had screeners for it too, and I was. i was looking forward to watching it. And I think they did it where it was like a three night event where they played like the first two episodes every night or something. But I, I just didn't get a chance to watch it. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear that much about it, so I assume like you just said, it was just okay. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, they. It was last year. It was like uh last fall, I think. Oh, this is great. Other limited series with big actors. Yeah. <sighs> I miss Mayor of Easttown. Oh, that was such a good, oh, such a good show. Speaking of shows ending, I have a terrible theory on how Ted Lasso or Lasso is going to end. I'm going to get worried that it might be right. Oh, uh, please share your theory. If it, if it doesn't really get into spoiler territory, definitely, definitely let me know. Is it like a character dying or something? Like I'm, I'm, I'm a season behind, so. Um, I got some of season two, I believe. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Now season two was great. Ooh, season two has probably the best episode of the series. Um, I can't remember the name of it right now, but season two has arguably one of the best episodes of TV I've seen in a very long time. Um, and it involves a, a, a hit gone wrong with a with a little girl. What was the name of that episode? It was so great. I think Bill Hader directed that episode too. It's like one of the highest rated episodes of TV uh, on IMDb. Ronnie and uh, um, Lily. Yeah. Episode five. Episode five. Uh, Maxine, even if you haven't, and it was directed by Bill Hader, even if you're not caught up, just watch episode five of Barry. Everyone in the chat right now that hasn't seen Barry, if you want to know if it's worth watching, and, it, and it's not like a, even, it's like a, a bottle episode where it, obviously it, it pertains to the storyline, but it's kind of a solo episode. Watch episode five of Barry. And if you haven't seen the show, just watch that episode. And, and if you don't fall in love with the show, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, let's see here. I'll be watching From season two, which is that. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen From, but I've heard great things about it. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of kind of came and went. Kind of came and went. LOL. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. I'm telling you, Maxine. I don't know how far you got. I don't know if you made it that far into season two, but please, I urge you all, stop what you're doing right now. Stop. Don't, don't even watch me. Turn the stream off. I'm joking. But when we're done with the stream, just go to HBO Max, go to Barry, go to season two, episode five, and just watch that episode. Just watch it, and you will be blown away. Uh, it is a, it's one of the best episodes of TV in the last few years. Yeah, I'm telling you, Justin. Just watch it. And again, you can watch episode five, and it won't even spoil anything because it's like such an interesting episode. <clears throat> 
But yeah. Will do, Elliot. I can do that. Yeah, Barry, again. Barry season two, episode five, called Ronnie and uh Lily is the name of the episode. And um <laughs> it is it's great. It's great. Uh and then once you see that, you're gonna want to go back and watch the rest of the series. I'm telling y'all, this is it's great. It's one of the best episodes of TV in, in, in recent memory. So, all right, y'all. So there you have it. We talked about all the new movies, uh, new shows coming in the month of April. Uh, again, if I were to highlight what I'm most excited for this month, going back to the movie front, very excited to see Evil Dead Rise. Um, very excited to see what we got with the, with the Super Mario film. Um, and then, you know, we'll see what comes in Renfield. Very excited for Bo is Afraid, of course, as I mentioned the new air movie. So it should be a good movie, a good month for movies. And then again, <clears throat> as far as streaming goes, the, the thing I'm very excited to talk to you all about in the coming days is beef. Again, watch beef April 6th, Thursday. We're going to be talking more about that. Um, outside of that, we talked about Barry ending and then love and death coming up to, to his ending. So it, it looks like we're going to have a really good month. We're going to be eating good this month, y'all. A lot of movies, a lot of shows to dive into, and a lot of stuff to cover this month. So definitely keep an eye out for a lot of content. If you haven't already, make sure your bell notifications on. Uh, I got plans for not only movie reviews, TV reviews, short form content, but we will be having uh, maybe one or two live streams. I could definitely see a live stream happening for beef uh, in some capacity. And then uh, um, we'll be doing some coverage for Barry. And then we'll see about Love and Death. That might be one of those shows that depending on the, on the demand, because I don't know how well shows do on a weekly basis that's based on true events um on this level like i don't know because it's not again i don't know is it a i don't think it's going to be all at once i think it's going to be a week to week thing with love and death and they might be doing like the first two episodes <clears throat> and then weekly after that let me see let me see so six episodes of course like i said it's a limited series so it's six episodes and Um, come on, give me what I'm looking for. Oh, the wait, what? It looks like the first three episodes are releasing on the release. Okay, so according to IMDb, the first three episodes will be premiering on the premiere date, and then it's, I think it's weekly after that. I could be wrong. Uh, they might drop it all at once. So we'll we'll see what comes of that as far as coverage goes. I haven't even reached out to HBO to see if they'll maybe let me check it out early, but we'll see. We'll see. Either way, we're gonna have a great month and uh, a lot of good content coming for you all. Thank you, Elliot. Movie file shout out to the best. Love kicking it. Hey, I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Uh, wait, what happens with the cheese? Oh, with uh, talking about Evil Dead. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out, man. Uh thank you, thank you. Uh what will be our next last of us? Uh man, what will be the next kind of last of us? Well, again, I'm you know, if you guys haven't been watching Succession, you know, that's my that's my jam right there. So it's not on that level of action and theories and all that stuff, but it's a great show, no, no less. Um, but as far as on that hype level, I don't know. Uh that's a good question, G. Um, I guess we'll just have to find our new Last of Us. Maybe we'll have something that's, I don't know, what's the next big, big, big show? Because House of Dragons is next year. Obviously, Stranger Things is next year. I don't know. We, we got to find it. We got to find it, G. We got to find our next one. This is, this is a mystery box. But neither here nor there, y'all. Like I said, April's going to be a fun month, and I hope you guys go on this journey with me. On on By the way, on the road to 50K. Hopefully this month we can cross that threshold. Or I'm just going to retire. I'm just going to hang it up. You know, 50K, I'm just going to call it quits after that. But no, nah, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, hopefully April could be the month that we have our 50K and we'll we'll probably do a celebration and go wild, get crazy. But uh, I'm looking forward to this month, y'all. And I hope you all have the best month ever uh, successfully with your work, your life, your relationships, your friendships, everything in your life. Hope is, is fantastic um for the month of april every day of the month is going to be great and uh whenever you do have those down days come over to movie files and we can go and 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 and, and go to these fantasy worlds go to these uh you know galaxies far far away and just have a good time talking about the stuff we love so thank you all for the for continued support thank you for joining me today on today's live stream i will be seeing you guys tomorrow for succession um our after show and then i'm gonna release i'm gonna chop it up and uh 
drop my review on Monday uh, for that live stream. And then for next week, uh, probably a r- air review, uh, Super Mario review, and I think that's it. Oh, and beef and beef. So it's going to be a fun time this week, y'all. But again, I appreciate you. And uh, I'm here for it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. On the road to 50K. That's crazy, man. You would have told me four or five years ago, I would have had 100 subscribers. I wouldn't have believed you. So awesome, man. But you guys are great. Hope you have a great Saturday. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for our discussion for succession. Uh, But until then, you guys have been great. Catch you later.